September is PCOS Awareness Month. That stands for Polycystic Ovary Syndrome. It's a serious genetic, hormonal, and metabolic reproductive disorder that impacts 15% of women. In March, WJBF's Renetta DuBose participated in PCOS Advocacy Day in Washington, D.C. A lot of us have gone to many, many, many doctors trying to get answers, trying to get hope. Really? TV stars Macy Bookout and Lauren Ash led a determined group of women in the nation's capital for PCOS Advocacy Day. After training women with polycystic ovary syndrome, marched to their respective congressional leaders' offices to request support for their cause. It's definitely something that we need help and research and funding for because it could prevent the very serious, you know, life-threatening illnesses. The cancer and those types of things, Alzheimer's get all the uh, all the, the headlines, but I think the gene therapies that are going to work for some of those maybe will have an opportunity as well. It's really the number one ovulation dysfunction in women, and they are devastated. It's not something that is talked about a lot in the in, in the research or the medical community. We need to find what causes it, and we need to find a cure for it. In order for that to happen, advocates point to the need for more National Institutes of Health funding. A spotlight also being made on service women who deal with being rejected by the military due to the impact of weight gain in the abdominal area because of PCOS. We have our um, abdominal circumferences measured. Um, it can pose a challenge if we know that this process causes us to have a larger abdominal circumference. There will be an advocate letter emailed to lawmakers from every state where there is someone with PCOS. And here she is right now, my colleague, Renetta DuBose. Renetta, thank you so much for coming and being on the show because we know this is important and we really wanted to talk about it. And I really want you to know that I think you're very brave to be so open oh, about you. your struggle. You were the first person that I learned about PCOS from. Tell me about your journey with it. I hear that from a lot of people and mm -hmm. it's pretty simple for me. I didn't know anything about PCOS. When I was younger I had missed periods mm -hmm. in high school and I knew I wasn't pregnant back in high school but I just I was told by my doctor go home you're stressed out. I was yeah. a really active teen and um, very smart, really studied really hard in school. Um, I had, I was over a lot of organizations and I really thought stress made my period not come. Mm -hmm. And so after college, right after graduation, I had a very scary moment and not to get too graphic, but my period lasted a little longer than it should have. And the clotting was terrible and I didn't know what to do. And I asked my sorority sisters, Jenny, I said, what do I do? It's the clotting is bad. It's almost right. like a stick of butter. And they said, Netta, go to the doctor. So I went and my doctor looked at me and I told her what was going on. And she said, you have PCOS. And I said, what? And she said, you got it just like you got your brown eyes from your mother. And wow. she handed me a book. She told me, cut the carbs, try to lose some weight. And that was it. And I did. I lost about 50 pounds going into grad school. And I worked hard, I jogged, I did what she said, I cut the carbs, but that was it. I had no idea what was going on with my body until really I moved to Augusta, Augusta. Georgia. And mm -hmm. it's like PCOS heaven here. Yeah. Everybody knows about it. It makes Doctors such a difference having it. the medical college here, doesn't it? It surely mm -hmm. does. Mm -hmm. And so I lived probably in in the dark about PCOS for several years when I, I just didn't know what to do, why I was in pain, why I had missed periods, depression. I didn't really know other than just going online and trying to find something. And sure. really, you couldn't find much back then. Mm. And this was probably 2006 when I was diagnosed. Really wasn't a whole lot. I even wrote a blog about it sort of in my early journalism days just to let people know what, what I was experiencing, what I was going through. But it was a really dark moment where I was really confused about my body in my early 20s. It's one of the ways that Renetta and I bonded when she came here because now you say back in the day. Let me tell you about back in the day. Back in the 80s, um, I as a teenager was diagnosed with endometriosis. Mm -hmm. And you know, we had no internet or anything then. And my friends, my friends in college, my housemates, none of us had ever heard of endometriosis. Yes. All they did was tell me, you know, at like 19 and 20, I'd probably never have children. Mm -hmm. 
And I tell you what makes me so happy now is I see these commercials on TV for endometriosis and endo study. And I just think, oh my gosh, it's come so far. Mm -hmm. It has yes. come so, so far. Yes. And my doctor, I ended up having a hysterectomy in my mm -hmm. 30s after my third baby because of the endometriosis. I was very lucky to have gotten pregnant on just one ovary. Mm -hmm but they ended up taking the second ovary and doing a total hysterectomy after the third baby. Mm -hmm. And my doctors have been interested in my girls and whether or not they would get it. And then oddly enough, one of my girls was diagnosed with PCOS. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I did was text Renetta mm -hmm. because you're, you're that go-to person here. How do you encourage women you know, to see a doctor? Like you, stories, <laughs> like you didn't, like you didn't for so long. Yeah. When I hear stories like yours, Jenny, it, it saddens me because I think about how my doctor said, you got it from your mother. And so I called my mother and I said, mom, do you know about PCOS? She said, I had never heard of it. Yeah. I ended up diagnosing my mother, her sister, her sister's daughter. And Jenny, I'm no doctor, but it may not be hard to say that you probably had PCOS as well. Yeah, you told me that. And was undiagnosed yeah. Yeah. because women with PCOS are at a greater risk for getting endometriosis. Mm. And what we want to in the advocacy world press is you, you have to make sure that you go to the doctor. You have to make sure that you talk about this, raise awareness, and that will lead to hopefully getting a cure. The most important thing is to raise awareness. But one thing that I always encourage women to do is tell me your symptoms, because I immediately jump into reading that to the doctor mode when it comes to PCOS, <laughs> I always do. Tell me your symptoms. And so if you have the two of the three major symptoms, you have PCOS, and I always say, go and talk with your doctor. And I encourage going to see a reproductive endocrinologist, even mm -hmm. if you're not trying to have a child just yet, because they see PCOS a little so bit more mm -hmm. than maybe, you know, your, your gyno. Right, right. And real quickly, how did you get so involved in the advocacy that you're, that you're was, going to these different I was at places? The y, I was at the Wilson Family Y on the treadmill and I saw on Facebook a free, it was free back then, PCOS symposium in Atlanta. I went, tweeted, and Facebooked everything I learned. I had friends in my inbox saying, ask them how I can get pregnant. Help me with wow. this. Help me with wow. that. The next year, I took my camera, did a story on it. And then they said, do you want to be a volunteer? You want to help out? And then a year after that, they said, we'd like to invite you on our patient advisory board. This is PCOS Challenge, the National Polycystic Ovary Syndrome Association. And I said, yes, I would love to help. And the rest is history. That's <laughs> awesome. And it takes someone like this lady right here bringing it to the forefront mm -hmm. and lobbying for those federal dollars for more research. Absolutely. Renetta, thank you so much. I really appreciate you being here. You're welcome. Thanks for your interest in PCOS. Absolutely. Still ahead on Jenny, September is also the month when we pay attention to another women's medical issue, ovarian cancer. We'll hear from a young woman whose dying wish was to prevent others from getting the disease.